Thanks for tuning into a special episode in collaboration between the Gale Ventures podcast and the Ionovation podcast at the Heinz Institute for Entrepreneurship and Innovation at Iona University. I'm Rob Kistner. I'm Andrew Vasquez. And today our guest is Carissa O'Connor. For the past two days, we've been running an eTalk speaker series where we've invited entrepreneurs and business leaders to come and talk to our students about their entrepreneurial journeys. It's been a really awesome experience and we're glad to have Carissa in our little temporary studio today. So how are you? Good. Yeah, good. Uh, so Carissa's been on the Gale Ventures podcast before episode 15, if anybody's interested. Uh, definitely a lot of great information about her journey in starting her business and how Iona contributed and the value of mentorship and all this really good stuff. But, um, you know, during your presentation today, what's sort of like the cliff notes of what you talked about? Yeah. So, um, starting a business, if you want to do it, just do it. It's not easy. It's not going to be seamless the entire time. Um, there's going to be moments where it's tough. It's hard. You want to throw in the towel, but um, persevere. Everyone's been in the same spot. Use your resources, network, um, use anything to your advantage and, and jump right in. So my question is, um, why weddings? Yeah, so I love events. Um, so I had always wanted to do corporate events. While I was here at Iona, I interned um, at a bridal store out of Manhattan and fell in love with the joy and the, the person, like being personal. Um, I guess of weddings, um, probably not the right word, but I realized that I could match the two. Um, and then wedding planning kind of came out of that where I could still get the, the joy in working one-on-one -on -one with a couple. Um, and then I could also work on those events and the logistics um, that invited me. And so, you know, in starting your business, worked full time, started yeah. this on the side, you know, talk a little bit about the balance. It's, you know, it's really hard to have a lot of balls in the air and being a business owner with just a business yeah. gives you a lot of balls in the air. So talk a little bit about dealing with that. Yeah. So there's no perfect solution for it and there's no like rule book or step by step on how to deal with it. And it was tough at first. There was days where I didn't know how to find a balance and I probably didn't balance the best. I was overworking myself. I was overwhelmed, burnt out. Um, I kind of had to, to hit a really, really tough burnout in order to realize that something wasn't working. Uh, I reevaluated what my priorities were at the time and took not a step back from my own business, but I kind of took a look at what I was doing, what I was providing and what was kind of a time and an energy suck and took um, a few steps back. I, I altered my services. I only offered um, really one service for a while so that I could manage my time and then got to a point where I learned how to balance the two in terms of I outsourced a lot of things from my own personal business. Um, I found a great working relationship with my, my day job and now I'm at a point where um, I feel pretty good about the balance and knowing what my limits are. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always impressive to see entrepreneurs that can really sort of parse out the different responsibilities and headspace and processes and all that. And you know, you're right, it really does take like crashing to realize that you have to take a step back. And it's like, it relates to that old adage, like don't work in the business, work on the business. And as yeah. a new business owner, it's like, it's your baby, it's yeah. your blood, sweat and tears. It's so hard to let some of those things go. So certainly understand where you're coming from. So you mentioned that process is learning how to balance your work life. So um, how did you learn what to delegate, what not to delegate to others? Yeah, so I kind of overhauled everything I was doing. So I took one um, client from start to finish and I just wrote down every task I did. Um, and then at the end of the wedding ended, I took you know about a week and I just looked at each task and I said, is this something that I specifically have to do? Or if someone had the tools or a checklist on how to do this, could they do it? And I just put a star and 90% of my process I had a star next to, um, and so I, I hired a VA and I was like, all right, it's gonna take some time. I'm gonna build out a group, uh, blueprint. It's not gonna be great right off the bat. And uh, between her and I over the last, I'd say year, we pretty much ironed out a process where she takes on a majority um, of the work for my wedding management couples. Um, so she'll do a lot of back end work when um, questionnaires go out, all of the information and stuff I usually ask in a call. I put that into a questionnaire, saves me time. She'll plug it into a wedding day playbook and then 
Um, about a day before uh, a call with a couple, I'll look through everything they sent over, come up with my questions, uh, familiarize myself with where they are, and then I'm only spending two hours on a task that was taking me 10. You know, for anybody out there that's thinking about starting a business, that has a business, it takes a lot of intentionality to stop doing your business and look at what you're doing in your business. But it's really important, like as Carissa just shared, like 90% of the tasks that you were doing day in and day out, you didn't need to. And you don't know that unless you intentionally look at that. So, you know, when you sort of like hit your cadence of getting clients and collecting revenue and all that, like be intentional about taking a step back and really looking at it, because it makes a huge difference. I mean, we've talked about that yeah. offline on several occasions. So, uh, you know, one of the things um, that we've talked about a lot, and I'm not sure if you brought this up in the talk, but the value of mentorship. Yeah. You're actually a mentor here, you're mentoring my own students. So talk a little bit about mentorship and what that's been for you in starting your business. Yeah, I mean, that was a game changer. I didn't act on finding a mentor when I should have, which was early on in my business. It wasn't until it's like, two and a half years ago that I took advantage of finding a mentor and it's been like phenomenal. Um, a mentor, as my mentor, she pushed me, she challenges me. Um, I can go to her with problems or, you know, this is what I feel like I, I'm not doing in my business or where I'm struggling and, and bounce ideas. She's also a community. So um, there's other planners that she mentors and, and she connects all of us. So now I can bounce ideas off of multiple people who understand what I'm going through. I don't need to necessarily give them a full lay down and okay, this is wedding planning, this is how you do it, here's 20 minutes of a backstory, here's my problem. I can just say, this happened with my couple, I do not want to, do not know what to do, has it happened to you, what have you done? Um, and I get like 30 messages of like, oh my god, this happened to me. Um, it, you know, if you find out what to do, let me know. Even that reassurance is great. Or I'll get some advice of, oh, this worked for me, this didn't work for me. Uh, so it's created a, a community and a safe space to kind of um, bounce ideas and get feedback and grow my business. You know, it's so funny, like uh, as a former business owner, working with a mentor and coaching other businesses, I find a lot of early stage entrepreneurs are hesitant to find a coach because they're afraid of being told they're doing the wrong thing. Yeah. And I think one of the things that you bring a lot of value to, to our students and what makes you a great mentor is you're very authentic and you own the mistakes and you, I would describe it as you humanize entrepreneurship. Like it's okay to be angry, to be upset when something yeah. goes wrong. And that is sort of like a, this sort of toxic image of the hustling entrepreneur on social media where like everything's always perfect all the time. And that's, it's messy. Yep. It's messy. It's like it's like what Mike's Iron Mike Stedman says. Like you don't see the sausage being made in the back room, right? So I think like you know your experience with mentorship and you paying it forward with like bringing this authenticity to mentoring our students has been really valuable. Yeah, I'm happy to. I mean, I think I've told you too. I'm like I used to spend like early on. I used to spend a lot of time in my car crying. Um, so I always say like if I can keep one other entrepreneur from spending time in their car crying and being like I, I hate this business I started, um, I you know. I've done a job. But not only that, I think it's letting people know it's okay to feel that yeah. way as long as you figure out how to push through that, yep. right? And I think that's what's really important. It is okay to feel that way. Yeah, and it's it's normal. And if yeah. someone tells you it's not or they've never done it, they're lying to you. Yep, 100%. So how did you learn to cope with failure, basically? You mentioned so much uh, emotional maturity in terms of handling your failures. So can you make an instance of like when you failed, but you failed, you failed a, like and you got back up again, basically? Yeah, so I mean, I, at first it was just understanding and, and letting myself know that I am going to fail and that's okay. Um, I had a, a couple where um, they were, were doing a fall wedding. There's elements that go into a fall wedding outside that don't into every other day. There was an assumption that I had assumed, um, which was a mistake on my part, that they understood that heaters weren't included um, in the venue until we were like a month out from the wedding. And they had already had um, problems with with budget and they had to lower their budget a few times and so when I had said oh okay like they added the heaters on to the rental agreement they were like we weren't expecting that very upset um, I took it to heart I was like oh my goodness I, I messed up I just assumed they, they knew this or I assumed when they had toured the venue um, and I beat myself up about it I was like this was my fault I'm now causing stress on them um, I dropped the ball three years ago I would have completely spiraled and panicked for, for days and, and taken it to heart and 
and just like shut down. Um, but I did a lot of growing and learning in terms of like, okay, you're going to fail. It, it, you're human. You need to solve the problem. Like you can't beat yourself up next step. And, and for them, I was able to do that. And I said, okay, I mean, I keep a fund in my business, like a, oh shit, you messed up fund. And it's money I set aside where like, if I make a mistake, I, I can I can offer this or compensate you and I said you know what this is my mistake I assumed I assumed you knew which wasn't the case I should have brought it up to you sooner um, or went through it sooner and I said I'm I'm gonna cover uh, the heaters and I, I covered the heaters for them. That's awesome. So. Well, you made it right. You yeah. Were, you own the mistake. You were yep. honest about it, and I, that's the best you can do. And if people are unreasonable in their reaction to that, then that just is what it is. It and is, yeah. You know, to wrap this up, any tips or any advice for our students that are aspiring entrepreneurs? Yeah, I'd say just jump in and do it. I mean, do it while you're here at Iona um, or while you're in school. You have so many resources. You have professors, other students. Um, they're willing to help you make connections, give you feedback. You can create such a strong base here with the support before you leave. Um, so you're set up for a success. Yeah. And you have mentors like Carissa. Yeah. So come and take advantage of it. Well, thanks so much for your time and obviously right. passing your experiences on to our students. It's obviously super valuable and I think they get a lot out of it over and over and over again. And for all you out there, thanks for tuning into this special episode of the Gale Ventures podcast and the Ionovation podcast. And we'll see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm.